suppose. <clears throat> okay, so we've been uh, learning about uh, uh, Second Corinthians, and um, we we moved on to chapter chapter three, right? Chapter three, and uh, we were looking at. If you, I'll maybe project the notes also uh, in a little while, but we were looking at um, chapter three. And how Paul was, uh, Paul declares that uh, um, to the Corinthians that you are our epistle, right? that you are our epistle, and he also uh, also says that uh, you are the epistle of the Lord, that the Lord has uh, your you you uh, you know uh, you your life itself, that you are an epistle of the Lord Jesus, epistle of Christ. Okay, and how was that epistle written? Uh, it is by the work of the Holy Spirit. So he's saying your life, your ministry, or your testimony, everything, it, it is actually a work of the Holy Spirit, right? And uh, and then we say, and he says, and we have such trust towards God. We have such trust towards God. Uh, and uh, we are not sufficient of ourselves, you know, our sufficiency, which means our ability to uh, teach and minister and ability to do everything comes from, God, right? Our sufficiency is from God. That is, we read in Second Corinthians three and verse five says, "Our sufficiency, you know, uh, our ability to do anything, comes from God." And uh, and also, then then he goes on to say that in verse six, Second Corinthians three verse, that uh, this is who we are. The Lord has made us uh, able, or He has given us the ability. Uh, he has made us sufficient to be ministers, to be servants of the new covenant, okay? not of the letter, but he has made us sufficient to be ministers of the new covenant. And what is the new covenant? It is that of the spirit. It is not of the law, but of the spirit. And he goes on to say what the, the old covenant does. Okay. Um, in the sense, he says, the letter kills, referring to the law, referring to um, the old covenant, that uh, the letter, the law, brings us under condemnation. It, it shows that we are sinful people. It shows what is right, what is morally wrong before God. Um, and and therefore, it points us points to the fact that we are uh, we are unrighteous. Right? We have not been able to live that pure and holy life before God that we are un unrighteous. And it does not it, it, it does not give us the ability to uh, to come out of it because we don't have the ability in ourselves, right? It is only through Christ. So which is what the new covenant does because by the power of the spirit, we have light. And because of the cross, we have life. We have passed from death to life. So he says, you know, the, so we have been empowered to live for him. The empowerment of the Holy Spirit to live a holy life. Uh, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to live a transformed life for the sake of Christ. That has happened. So there's the, the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life that we saw in verse 6. Okay. And, and then he goes on to, um, you know, uh, uh, explain. And we, we also looked at Romans chapter 7 and we saw, you know, why the letter kills, right? And uh, why the Spirit gives life. Okay. Now let's look at uh, uh, from verse 7 onwards, right? Where he contrasts between or makes a difference between the old covenant and the new covenant and, uh, and goes on to talk about um, the difference uh, between them, okay. So uh, he goes on to talk about what the old covenant does, what the new, what the new, and he uses several uh, different terms to talk about uh, both. So, um, so let's look at that. Okay, uh, if you're following in the notes, and I'm just projecting it here, but uh, it's uh, it's page eighteen, right? Okay. So from verse seven onwards, but if the ministry of death written and engraved on stones, was glorious. So the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. How will the ministry of the Spirit not be more glorious? Okay, So let's look at that. He's saying, 
you know this um, old covenant uh, and uh, the 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 law uh, that we that 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 was before the cross you know, it says the ministry of death okay written and engraved on stones that is how the lord you know gave those 10 commandments and which uh, to moses it was engraved on stones and it was given and and it was glorious right so that ministry that work of god was glorious so the children of israel so what happened we, you know he's referring to an in incident in uh, exodus chapter uh, i think it's that ch chapter 34 okay we can uh, probably go there we can turn to exodus chapter 34 and i think it's we can read from verse 29 onwards okay um is it 34 yeah 34 29 uh, now it was so when moses came down from mount, mount sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in moses hand so you know the law was given what you should do what you should not do and uh, it was in his hands and uh, Mo that moses did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with them so when aaron and all the children of israel saw moses behold the skin of his face shone and they were afraid to come near him uh, then moses called to them and aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him and moses talked with them afterward all the children of israel came near and he gave them as commandments all that the lord has spoken with him on mount sinai and when moses has finished speaking with them he put a veil on his face but whenever moses went in before the lord to speak with him he would take the veil off until he came out and he would come out and speak to the children of israel whatever he had been commanded and whenever the children of israel saw the face of moses that the skin of moses face shone then moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him referring to god so moses you know put on this veil veil means a a, a covering right a, 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 a cloth to cover his face uh, because it was actually shining because he was in the presence of God and and it says here that the people were actually afraid to come near him okay which means it was something that was very visible okay so the glory glory of God so so Paul is saying you know this was glorious the ministry of death so that the children of Israel could not steadily look at uh, the face of uh, Moses so uh, since it was uh, you know we see that it was glorious so uh, just a minute please um so that that itself was glorious so the the ministry of the spirit how will that not be even more glorious okay how will uh, not uh, which, which, which the, that particular glory was actually passing away it was fading away so it was not a permanent thing his face yes his face shone but it it would it would fade away but how will the ministry of the spirit not be more glorious if the letter was glorious how will not the ministry of the spirit be even more glorious so he uh, and then he says in verse 9 for if the ministry of condemnation had glory the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory okay, like we saw uh, you know the law pointed it to everyone that they were wrong okay because the standard of god was here and everybody was you know way down so that is what the law pointed out. So it, it was it condemned everybody to uh, to be sinners. Okay, it condemned everyone to be sinners. Like uh, in um, Romans three, um, verse twenty three, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Now, how how did everyone know that? It was because of the law. Yeah, right. right? So calls it the ministry of condemnation um, verse 24 Romans 3 verse 24 being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus so uh, verse uh, you know if you look at verse 9 in um, uh, 2nd Corinthians 3 it says the ministry of righteousness exceeds much more in glory okay for even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that excels so he says there's no comparison because this is even more glorious 
for if is what if what was passing away what is passing away was glorious what remains is much more glorious verse 11 so we know that the spirit of god indwells us he is with us forever and he continues to minister to us and through us right so that is what the lord jesus said that the holy spirit will come will abide with you for ever so uh, you know he's he's staying with us he's he stays with us he uh, ministers to us as believers he uh, he sanctifies us he leads us into victory and he he uh, enables us to minister to others so he's saying um if pass, what was passing away was glorious you know what remains is much more glorious verse 12 therefore since we have such hope we use great boldness of speech okay we use great boldness of speech okay so let's look at some of the terms words that he uses to talk about both these covenants okay we see that he says old covenant new covenant ministry of death ministry of the spirit um the ministry of condemnation and ministry of righteousness what is passing away what remains right so to to differentiate between the um, uh, covenants okay so uh says we have so much hope in this covenant because of the because it remains right it it does not change it does not fade the glory remains the glory is uh, uh, you know it's it's constant so he's saying since there is glorious hope in such a glorious covenant okay so saying since we have much hope in this glorious covenant we use great boldness of speech so we're saying you know we are bold and courageous in our proclamation right uh, in proclamation of the gospel we use great boldness of speech verse 17 and 18 now the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty the lord is the spirit and where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty or freedom or uh, when we say freedom it's it's not freedom to do anything that you want but it's freedom uh, legitimate freedom meaning freedom to do the right thing right you are free to do the right thing you are free to uh, walk in righteousness where the spirit of the lord is there is freedom okay he has set us free uh, and uh, he has set us free and he's released us as slaves of righteousness so there is freedom where the spirit of the lord is and uh, verse 18 but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the lord so he's saying that you know when we um when we turn to the lord when we look to the lord uh there there is uh, you know there is liberty there is freedom uh, okay i think i just skip to verse 17 but uh, let's just look at um verses 13 to 16 i'm sorry let's just look at let 13 to 16 before we you know go over to 17 so uh, he says you know we have great boldness of speech and then he says verse 13 unlike moses who had a veil over his face okay um because of the glory of the lord because the children of israel could not look steadily at that glory they they were afraid we just read in exodus 34 but he also he says in verse 14 that their minds were blinded the minds of the children of israel was minded and and he says for until this day okay even till today the same veil remains unlifted okay what does it mean it means that even into the present day to the jews the same veil in the sense there is a kind of a covering there is a clo- covering just like how moses um you know put that veil so that the glory could not be seen uh there is a similar the same kind of a veil which remains there in the reading of the old testament okay why because the old testament is actually pointing people to the lord jesus right all the uh, everything of the old testament is the other the prophetic writings are pointing to the lord jesus 
and while the reading of there is the reading of the old testament to the jews there remains that veil okay and that veil that covering is taken away in christ jesus so when one turns to the lord only then is that covering taken away so um, so he says that um, you know even to this day when moses is read a veil lies on their heart they are not able to receive why because they have not they have rejected christ they are not able to understand they are not able to see that well you know all these scriptures are actually pointing to the lord jesus a veil lies on their heart just like how it was covering the glory it was not allowing the people to see the glory same way here they are not able to see the glory of the lord jesus because even in the reading of the old testament when every time the writings of moses are read they are not able to see the glory of the lord jesus because there is a veil there is a covering over their heart nevertheless verse 16 nevertheless when one turns to the lord that veil is taken away Right. when one turns to the lord that veil is taken away okay so then he says uh, we have such glorious hope we use boldness of speech okay now verse 18 but we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the lord okay so with unveiled face beholding uh, as in a mirror the glory of the lord what is happening Uh, first of all we all of us we are unveiled face that covering has been taken away because we have turned to the lord jesus so there's nothing hiding us or there's nothing preventing us from seeing uh, who god is who the lord jesus is for who he is and his glory there's nothing hiding us right the veil has been taken away and beholding as in a mirror the glory of the lord we are being transformed Okay, the word used there is metamorpho, which means that uh, we are changed from one form to another, one image to another. We are changed. We are transformed. There is drastic change. When when we see, we we when we look at when we behold the glory of God. You know, he says, beholding the glory of God, we are being transformed. into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the lord so what is happening is that as we continue to behold okay beholding like continuing as we continue to behold not just once but we continue to look we continue to gaze and observe and study the the works of the lord okay what is the glory of the lord who the lord is and what he does his power his his presence everything Right. So as we study, as we observe, as we study, as we gaze, as we spend time doing that, what is happening? We are continuously being transformed. Right. As we gaze, as we study, as we continue to look upon the Lord, we are being continuously changed. So we are being changed. we are being transformed from one level of christ likeness to another level of christ likeness we are being continuously changed and that continuous change happens as we observe as we study the works of the lord as we spend time in the presence of the lord right so he's saying we are being transformed into that very same image okay so so that so that's the wonderful thing that we are being transformed as we continue to be or continue to look continue to study and and the way of the lord the works of the lord we are being transformed okay and uh, and that's who brings about that transformation he says just as by the spirit of the lord by the spirit of the lord we are being continuously transformed from one glory to another he says into the same image into the same likeness whose image is this the likeness of christ right because who are we who are we studying who are we gazing upon who are we observing the lord himself right so as we observe his glory his works who he is what he does we are being changed how are we changed by the holy spirit into what into the same likeness right into the lord 
the image of the Lord himself into the same likeness, we are being changed by the spirit of the Lord. So, um, you know, the transforming work of the Lord is in our hearts from the inside out. It is, it, it is, it becomes visible, tangible. Right. Uh, so we're able to see that uh, this work is being done by the Holy Spirit. Okay. Okay. Let's move on to uh, chapter four. Okay. Before we move on to chapter four, any questions, any doubts, any clarifications? Okay. We can talk about that. Um, okay. So this um, chapter three, um, again, Paul talking about his. Uh, uh, you know, observing the Corinthians and they're saying that, you know, you are a work of the Lord. You are a work of the Holy Spirit, uh, the transformative work of the Holy Spirit. And and he starts by saying, you know, do we need any letters of commendation, right? Because uh, you you yourselves, the, your lives, are our letter, is actually our letter of commendation. It's like saying, okay, you know, have you seen the lives of these Corinthians? You know, be ministered to them. Right, and our ministry is by the power of the Holy Spirit. Right, the whole God is the one who made us sufficient to be ministers. And as you know, you look at their lives; that itself shows the kind of ministry that we did, the kind of ministry that we do. Okay, so he's saying this itself is like a letter of commendation. We don't, uh, we don't need any letters. Your life is an epistle. Okay, and uh, and then he goes on to talk about the the covenant and how the, we are actually ministers of the new covenant which brings life it's a glorious covenant it's uh, it's uh, you know it's it's much glorious than the, uh, the than the old you know the old covenant the thing is that that itself the old covenant itself was glorious okay and it says if that was glorious this is how will not this be even more glorious and we are ministers of this glorious ministry, glorious covenant. And um, in doing so, he talks about how Moses uh, used covered his face with a veil, and in order to, you know, stop that glory from, uh, sorry, in order to uh, cover that glory from being visible, because people were being afraid. People were afraid, and they didn't want to come near. So he had to literally cover. Uh, his face was shining and he had to literally cover his face. Now, uh, the thing is that even as he did so, you know, there is a veil upon the hearts of people, right? There is a veil which is preventing people. There is like a covering which is preventing the Jews um, to see Jesus for who he is. They're not able to understand who Jesus is. They're not able to come to the conclusion that Jesus is the Messiah. Right? There is a veil because they have rejected him. They have not turned to him. And that veil is taken away only when people turn to the Lord. So uh, so he's saying, but we, with unveiled faces, because we've already turned to the Lord, you know, that veil has been taken away. We're seeing the glory of the Lord. So with as we see the glory of the Lord with unveiled face, beholding the glory as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord. What happens when we see, you know, that beholding means to observe, to study, to keenly, uh, you know, uh, examine, to study. What happens? We are being transformed. Okay, so, so that's chapter three, and then he, he also he, he continues on in chapter four. Let's uh, let's look at chapter four. Okay, therefore. Since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. First, he said, we are bold, we are courageous, we have much hope. Since we have this hope, we, we use great boldness of speech. Right? That's what he says here. He says, since we have this glorious ministry, this ministry of the Holy Spirit, led by the Holy Spirit, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing, whose minds the God of this age has blinded, 
who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bond servants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So let's let's look at each, each of these verses. So it says uh, in verse 1, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. You know, we, are, we are not discouraged. Okay. Because he's going to talk about some discouraging things that happen. Okay, So he's saying, well, since we have this glorious ministry, since we are ministers of this new covenant, which is glorious, and we have the Holy Spirit, and we are with unveiled face, we are looking at the glory of the Lord, and we are being transformed into the image of Christ, right? Uh, even as we do that. So he says, since uh, we have this ministry, we do not lose heart. And, you know, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart. Okay. But we have renounced. Renounce means to give up. Okay. To to set us, you know, to, to put away, put aside. So we have renounced. What have we renounced? The hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Okay, so this is what it is. So we have renounced the hidden things of shame, that anything, you know, anything that would cause shame, anything that would cause um, uh, any kind of uh, shame to uh, in our lives, we have put it, put it away. Okay, we have, you know, I, do, I don't want to do these things. So I've put away the things of shame. And I do not walk, you know, he says, secondly, not walking in craftiness. Okay. Not walking in craftiness, meaning that he does not uh, use any cunningness or craftiness or manipulating uh, people or, you know, use any uh, lies for the sake of, you know, getting people to understand or getting people to believe. You know. So he says, in this ministry, it is a glorious ministry. And we have renounced, we have put away, put aside all the hidden things of shame. Okay. And this is how we live. When he says not walking, which means, you know, the way uh, one's lifestyle. Right. So this is how we walk. In other words, this is how we live our life. Okay. Uh, not living in craftiness. Nor, so he's, he writes about certain things, right? Renouncing the hidden things of shame. Not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, right? So, which means that when using the word of God, when I handle the word of God, when I use the word of God, when I minister the word of God, it is not with any ulterior motive, okay? It is with pure motives. I don't use it to, to cheat people, right? We don't, I, I don't use it deceitfully. That is what he means, right? We're not using the word of God deceitfully, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but in the right manner, not using it to gain advantage over people, not using it to enslave people, not using it to get people to do what I want for my life, right? So not putting people at a disadvantage. So, uh, so he says, you know, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation, or display of the truth. Okay. But by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the presence of God. So he's saying, you know, I don't compromise on the word. I don't change the word. I don't adulterate the word. You know, we saw, you know, um, uh, the, uh, where he says uh, in the previous chap uh, chapter 2, we don't peddle the word of God, meaning we don't adulterate the word of God. We don't change it in order to benefit us and put you at risk. No. Right. So he says we we do not know anything. We do not do anything like that. Okay. Uh, no cunningness uh, when it comes to you know talking to people or uh, interacting with people. Uh, handle the word of God in a in a in a non deceitful manner. In truth. So, so that is what he says. No, I don't handle it deceitfully, or by, but 
by manifestation of the truth. The truth is very clearly displayed. The way I live my life, you know, it's to, it's to live a truthful life. So by display of the truth and and be, and by the display of the truth, the way I live my life, by the display of the truth, I commend myself, okay, uh, in order to commend ourselves to every man's conscience. So what, what does that mean? The way I live my life, that itself is a recommendation or a commendation saying to every man's conscience. So, so you know, if I see Paul, then my conscience is clear. You know, I, he, the way he lives my life, he, he lives his life and I see it and it's, it's like a commendation to, you know, to my conscience. I know that, okay, uh, the way he lives, the lives his life, the way he's handling the word of God, that that commends, that recommends him, his ministry, and him, him, he as a person, to my conscience. Okay, so um, so that is what uh, he says. By the manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God, that God is our witness. Okay. Do all this. And I'm making a, an appeal to your conscience that we are in fact doing the right thing, and it is in the witness, in the uh, as God is our witness in the sight of God. Okay. Then in verse three, see, but even if our gospel is veiled, you know, this good news that I will be preached, preach, if it is veiled, if it is covered, if it is blocked in some way. It is veiled to those who are perishing. Okay, meaning that these people have not received, not accepted the truth. So it is veiled to those, it is covered to those who are perishing. Uh, and it, it also says in verse 4, whose minds that the God of this age has blinded. The God of this age, referring to Satan, referring to the powers of darkness. What has happened? Satan has blinded their minds. So you see, you know, normally what when we see use when we say blind, we talk about sight, right? Something that we see, not able to see. We say, okay, this person has blindness, is is blinded. So here, you know, the usage is that his minds have been blinded. Okay, so what is it? The mind is not able to receive, the mind is not able to understand. Okay, with our minds we think, with our minds we reason, with our minds we understand, right? Now, similar to how we see with our eyes and, you know, we have sight uh, because of our eyes, when when our eyes are blinded, we don't see that, right? We're not able to, the vision is either blurred, it's, it's something to do with the eyes, we're not able to see clearly. In the same manner, because Satan has done something, blinded the minds so what is it their mind is not able to receive their mind is not able to comprehend understand and receive the truth okay lest the light of the gospel of uh, of christ who is the image of god should shine on them shine on them right so this is what satan has done satan does satan has imprisoned them actually he's allowed them he's not allowing them to see uh, minds have been blinded for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves, your born servants, for Jesus' sake. So he's saying we're not preaching about ourselves or about anything about us, but we preach about the Lord Jesus. And who are we? We are actually your servants. Or he uses the word born servants, which means slaves. We are servants for the sake of the Lord Jesus. We are your servants or your slaves for the sake of the Lord Jesus. Right? For the sake, meaning for the sake of his, what he wants done. Right? For the sake of the ministry that he wants done. For the sake of the people whom he takes us to and asks us to serve. For his, for that sake, we are even like slaves to serve you. Okay, So um, he brings a very different, different perspective about ministry itself, right? He's saying, we are your bond servants for the sake of the Lord Jesus. Okay. For it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge 
of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So what does it mean? That It means that, uh, you know, yes, God has used us. He uh, uses us to proclaim and, uh, and he has actually commanded light. The one who commanded light to shine out of darkness, verse 6. The one who created. Okay, let me just go down. The one who is the creator God. Okay. Now this God, he has commanded light. The one who actually commanded light to shine out of darkness. He has shone in our hearts. He himself has done something in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God. So saying this, this knowledge of the glory of God is light that takes away darkness, that dispels darkness. You know, when that light comes, then darkness leaves, right? So this light, this knowledge of the glory of God is actually like light which shines in the dark. So God actually commanded light to shine out of darkness. In creation, we see that. The same God who commanded light to shine out of darkness is shining this light in our hearts to take away the darkness. He took away the darkness. He takes away the darkness in our hearts by shining the, uh, the, by shining the light. And what is that light? The knowledge of the glory of Christ. Knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So which means that this knowledge of the Lord Jesus is like light which dispels darkness. Whatever ignorance is there, whatever darkness is there, whatever the works of the enemy are there, those are taken away because of this light. Okay. Then verse 7 says, But we have this treasure, you know, this knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. You know, we have this treasure what is the, uh, the word treasure used there? You know, it's like um, a storehouse of valuable things. Yeah, the Greek word used there is thesaurus. Um, let's, let's just read those, uh, you know, eight verses, right? But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. We are hard pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, yet not in despair, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Christ may also be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake that the life of Jesus also may be minister, manifested in our mortal flesh. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith, according to what is written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Okay, so let's look at verse 7. It says, but we have this treasure. Now, what is that treasure that he's referring to? You know, this, uh, uh, this storehouse of valuable things. What is it? It's the, it's the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, meaning uh, the glory of the Lord, the, un the knowledge of the ways, the will, the, uh, the desires, the plans, whatever you know, that pertains to the Lord Jesus. Now that is like treasure. Okay? And the Greek word used there, thesaurus, meaning a deposit, a wealth, a collection of treasure. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Uh, is again reminding the reader that you know we are we have been created out of the earth, right? Uh, that's how God fashioned man. Genesis account, we have been created out of the earth, so we have we carry it in earthen vessels. Earthen vessels also meaning that you know it's not uh, this is fragile. It's bound to break, right? It's uh, it's not long lasting. There is a time when it will it will just crumble, right? And uh, this is what the container, the container is like this. It's an earthly, fragile container. Okay. 
so we are like this so we cannot boast about things of the earth or our physical ability or our accomplishments or anything because it is just a container our body is just a container what we do in the natural the physical it's 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 of the earth okay. and why did he do that why did he do it specifically so that the excellence of the power may be of god okay so that the excellence of the power the power of god you know is again coming back to that in 1 corinthians also you know if you remember 1 corinthians chapter 1 he uh, talks about how um he wants them to put their faith in the power of god and not in the wisdom of man he wants them he wants the corinthian church he wants the believer to be acquainted right, to have Uh, a knowledge of an understanding of and faith in the power of god and not in the wisdom of man so here also he's saying you know uh, it's the excellence of the power is is of god meaning he's the source of that and it's not us because we carry this knowledge we carry his presence we carry his power and all that is in the earthly vessel Uh, we carry it uh, it's a it's an it's a treasure that we carry in earthen vessels okay um so that the glory the power of god uh, may be displayed and so that ourselves you know it is not our, our, our power our ability the excellence of the power is actually of god he is the source okay verse 8 we are hard pressed here from verse 8 you know here he goes on to talk about some of the difficulties challenges the the trials that he has faced okay and and the thing is that you know whatever he has faced and he's saying that we did not give up okay uh, let's read that we are hard pressed on every side yet not crushed we are perplexed but not in despair persecuted but not forsaken struck down but not destroyed okay so he's saying we are hard pressed meaning um we are you know, it's like a lot of pressure upon us uh, you know there's a lot of uh, oppression we're hard pressed on every side but we are not crushed okay uh we are not uh, it's it's not the end yes the reality is that we are facing this kind of pressure we are hard pressed then secondly we are perplexed okay we don't know what to do we have come to the end of ourselves you know we don't have answers sometimes we are perplexed but not in despair you know we're not troubled we're not in despair yes the reality is that we are perplexed we don't know the answers we don't have the answers we don't know all the all the things um you know how to solve these things but we are not in despair we are persecuted the reality is that everywhere i go everywhere they were doing they were being persecuted for their faith but not forsaken we're not forsaken by the lord Okay. we might be forsaken by people we might be persecuted but not forsaken struck down right struck down and meaning that we are actually put down physically we are struck down by the blows of man we are we are on the ground but not destroyed okay. we might be struck down but we are not destroyed okay okay so let's uh, we'll take a break here and uh, we'll come back and also you know discuss maybe and any questions are there we can clarify okay we'll take a break <laughs> 